use the greatest integer function clubbed with integration is in demand and in fashion, especially in J events examination. So here we have a beautiful problem and let's try to solve it. So 0 to 1 greatest of under root 1 plus 1 by x dx. The basic idea in this kind of problem is to convert this problem into a geometrical fashion because so that you can easily visualize. As we know, greatest integer is a discrete function. So it's better if you can directly convert the graph of greatest integer into a small steps and just add the area which will give the answer. Okay, so this is the only logic in this kind of question mostly for J. So let's try to solve it. So before we go further, we can just have a feel of what the graph of root over 1 plus 1 by x will look like and then how greatest is going to modify its graph. So as we know, when x is tending to 0, this term will have maximum occurs so it will go to infinite. When x is infinity, this will be in almost in ICU. So it will tends to 0, so it will be asymptotic to 1. So the graph is more or less like hyperbolic behavior. Now, how greatest is going to help? So now how greatest is going to change graph? Before that, we have a square root of that. So a square root will not change much. Basically, it will become, you know, like a little bit more excuse down. Because if you have, uh, whenever we have output, let's say we have two, so a square root will make this height as root two. So it will just fall down. So basically what we'll say is a square root of one plus one by x is similar graph. It will be similar graph, but it may be excuse down. Okay, so that's what I have grabbed over here. So if we'll grab the function, it's a square root of one plus one by x. Now we want greatest of that. So greatest of that means whenever we are getting any output for some particular x, we need to take the integer part of this. The best way to draw greatest of any graph is, let's call this entire thing as function f of x. And then you can make simply floors like first floor, second floor, third floor, fourth floor, fifth floor, and so on and so forth. And check the point of intersection. So I have drawn the line y equals 1, y equals 2, y equals 3, y equals 4, y equals 5 and so on and so forth. And let's see the point of intersection of these integers. So I am trying to look for those values of x for which this becomes exactly 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5. Because that's the point where the function will be discontinuous or we need to take the interval. So clearly at x equals 1, this will be asymptotic to 1. So it will be at x equals 1, we are going to get a value of root 2, root 2 get is 1. Right, so at x1, we will get a get value of 1. At y equals 2, we will get a value of x1, which will give the output as 2, so let's call alpha 1. Similarly, uh, at some value of, so this will be 3, we can find the value of x, let's call it alpha 2. Let's call this equals 4 and you solve for x and let's call that value alpha 3 and so on. In general, instead of doing 1, 2, 3, 4, we can just take the value to be n. And once we'll calculate, x is 1 by n square minus 1. Please do remember n is a positive integer because our integration is from 0 to 1. So that's the only point of interest. Now, as you can see from the graph very clearly, is from alpha 1 to 1. Alpha 1 is the x values for which this function, this output inside or the entire function, is giving you a height of 2 right so if i take up any values of x from alpha 1 to 1 over here if i take any value of x between alpha 1 to 1 this square root will be between root 1 and root 2 so it's one point something it will always be like okay so your greatest will always be 1 so between alpha 1 to 1 the output that function will get is always 1 so this will be the sided region similarly for alpha 2 to 2 we will have this sided region so let me use different color so we'll have this sided region, right? Again, if we have alpha 3 to 2, the sided region will change because alpha 3 will output will be 3 now. So we'll have this sided region. So this region area is slowly converging, right? So it becomes more and more narrow. And since the space is less, so let's not put more diagram unnecessarily come. So all that I need to do is to add this area plus this area plus the third area plus fourth area right like with the fourth point of intersection somewhere and so on and so forth so we need to add all these areas and here we go so i'm marking the point as one alpha one alpha two alpha three alpha four alpha n and so on of course it will go till infinity now first area is this is length into height so height is already one and length is one minus alpha one second area is height is two times alpha one minus alpha two third is three times alpha two minus alpha three four times alpha three minus alpha four and so on 
if you'll add all these guys if you'll add all these guys you'll get a very interesting result as you can see we'll have 1 minus alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 1 minus 2 alpha 2 plus 3 alpha 2 minus 3 alpha 3 plus 4 alpha 3 minus 4 alpha 4 and so on and so forth which gives you alpha 1 3 alpha 2 minus 2 alpha 2 is alpha 2 this will become alpha 3 so we have just a series of 1 plus alpha 1 till infinity now what is alpha 1 as we have already seen that alpha 1 is the x values for which the output of the function is 2 right so if i'll take the x values for which output is 2 clearly you can put n equals 2 and you can check it will be 1 by 2 a square minus 1 right similarly alpha 2 will be 1 by 3 a square minus 1 alpha 3 will be 1 by 4 a square minus 1 so alpha n will be 1 by n plus 1 whole a square minus 1. all that i need to do is to simply add all these values now this is an interesting question and see how question took a turn to a series and sequence problem so let's start compressing this result and we can write this in form of 1 by n square minus 1 it's a typical sum and then we can factorize denominator and now it reminds you of something as telescopic yeah because you can't afford like just adding these terms terms by term moreover you know as the contribution of the next subsequent term is decreasing so series has to converge okay like that's not a convergent test like it may converge or may not here of course it will converge so let's see because it is telescopic so n square minus 1 is n minus 1 and plus 1 so now i can write 1 as as modly n plus 1 minus n minus 1 but that gives extra 2 so i have to divide by 2 and that runs from 2 to infinity so it's half and it's 1 by n minus 1 minus 1 by n plus this summation n equals 2 to infinity what i have done is basically i have written a term let's say 1 by 2 a square minus 1 as smartly so it's 2 plus 1 into 2 minus 1 and then one i have written 2 plus 1 minus 2 minus 1 and half times of this okay so if we'll do the same thing for all term we'll get half 1 by 2 minus 1 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 again plus half times 1 by 3 minus 1 minus 1 by 3 plus 1 and so on so forth and now you can clearly see something is getting cancelled so we have a mass murder here because this is 1 minus 1 by 3 uh this guy is half times i can write 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 if i take half common so plus 1 by 3 minus 1 minus 1 by 4 next will be 1 by 4 minus 1 minus 1 by 4 plus 1 and so on so forth so can you can you see the cancellation can you see the cancellation yes clearly you can see the cancellation because the first term is surviving this will survive and minus 1 by 3 is getting kicked by 1 by 3 over here right similarly uh, minus 1 by 4 is getting kicked by the next term here which is 1 by 5 minus 1 similarly minus 1 by 5 is getting killed by the next term here. so everything is getting killed and we are left with just two terms which is 1 and 1 by 3 minus 1 so that is the only survivor so 1 plus half times 1 plus 1 by 2 and that gives you 7 by 4 and this is the answer to this beautiful problem the takeaway from the problem was very obvious like although the problem seemed clumsy in the first book and we can't see the hidden series at least in the first side but see how beautifully sequence series is already installed little bit fundamental idea of what this definite indication means which is the core matter of this chapter I hope you have enjoyed it and I'll come with more uh, small problems giving you ideas and useful